This evening, Dutch Risk Reduction Team here to solve drainage problems in Georgetown. Former President touts statements which can gender racial disharmony and social unrest. The BB Civic defends Mr. Jagdeal, though he says he's a decent man. The President consents to address code which is decent, objects to a backward practice in the region. As the economic crisis deepens in Venezuela, persons spend more than eight hours in lines waiting for food and other necessities. And internationally, Michelle Obama's endorsement of Hillary Clinton seemingly erased the tensions of day one of the end of the DNC. From Safe TV headquarters in South Rambert Gardens, this is Safe TV Headline News with Rihanna Ammon. Headline News is now being streamed live on our YouTube channel, as well as our website, safetvghana.com. Join us. The Netherlands Dutch Risk Reduction Team that came to Ghana in June to collaborate with the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, NDIA, to produce a hydraulic model to address flooding in Ghana is back. Andrew Weeks was with the team this morning as they visited sites around the city. The team is made up of seven persons who are doing the inspections throughout the city. However, two of its members are yet to arrive, but are expected in shortly. Acting Mayor Sharad Duncan told Headline News why the Dutch risk reduction team began their first day of inspection with the city engineers. The team is mapping the drainage of Georgetown, the drainage system in Georgetown. Um, and that's a very useful ex exercise because as you would know, that the Mayor and City Council has remit um, also uh, to keep our drains in, in pristine shape um, and cleared. And so it's very useful that the Dutch is here. It's going to um, impact the city in a great way in terms of being able to map the drainage system. The acting mayor took the team on a tour of City Hall, the mayor's office, council chambers, the engineer department, etc. The team is working along with the local engineers to measure parts of the drainage system. They are going to put a computer hydraulic model together from which they will be able to say which areas in Georgetown are vulnerable for flooding at any time during rainfall. Finance Committee Chairman Oscar Clark said he was happy for the free expertise. The extent that this advice given by the Dutch is coming at uh, the cost to the Netherlands and not to us, to that extent we are going to be benefiting financially from this uh, exercise. So we are very pleased to be associated with it and I look forward to the report uh, which will give us an indication of what works we need to do. The team started off visiting the Avenue de Republic, Canal and Coca. City engineer Calvern Venture, who accompanied the team, gave headline news an update via telephone as to the other areas visited. So we start from Monishwar, um, J there is JP Santos, which is the Commerce Street Canal. Uh -huh. Then we went to Monishwar Sluice. Uh, then we yeah. went to uh, Lamaha Street Sluice. Then Kowan Street Sluice or Commons Canal. After that, we went to the Kingston Sluice, popularly known as the Forestry Sluice. Then we go to Kitty Pump Station, and we just move off from Lilinda Pump Station. One of the vulnerable areas which the team might have missed was Delft Avenue between John and Craig Street, Camberville, that is heavily flooded during the rainy season, greatly inconveniencing residents and students attending the Morgan Learning Center. However, Riverview, Sussex Street, and La Penitence Sluice were among the areas visited, but the computer hydraulic model is not being prepared for the entire city of Georgetown. The city engineer, Mr. Venture, explains why. Well, the hydraulic model is basically enough for the whole of Georgetown. They're going to concentrate basically on the area that is um, vulnerable to, to, to flood, any little rainfall and flooding. Mm -hmm. which is the South Rongveld area, South Rongveld, North Rongveld area, mm -hmm. and also the Lillian area there. We are basically looking at like um, the cash interior of Campbellville and so forth. Because those are the areas that flood very quickly. Mm -hmm. If you know South, Rong South and North Rongveld, when you need a rainfall, mm -hmm. you'll get a um, overtopping. Rihanna, according to Mr. Venture, the vulnerable areas identified will be used as a model which will be applied with a few modifications to other vulnerable areas around Georgetown. The project, which is headed by the NDIA, is critical since Ghana's low-lying coast 
which is below sea level at high tide, faces the threat of flooding, especially from frequent, intense rainfall. We are back to you. Thanks, Andrew. We would love to see the drainage issue in Georgetown dealt with. Very recently, a video has been circulating on the internet of opposition leader Barra Jagdeo making a speech at a Guyana reunion held in New York City. The former president was quoted as saying, there is an assault on Guyana's democracy, particularly to the people of Indian origin and supporters of the PPP. Here's more from Lisa Hamilton. I'm not going to make a, a speech today because most of you are familiar with what's taking place at home now. There is an assault on our democracy. There is an assault on people of Indian origin. There is an assault on supporters of the PVP. What we thought would never return to Guyana in just one short year has returned with full force and even worse in some regards than the Burning Era. From, from snatching people's land that have transport to the passage of new laws. I don't know, many of you may be familiar with the budget this year. 140 new taxes were increased. And, and largely targeting poor people, but mainly rural poor. And you know who live in the rural areas. It's mainly our supporters. And so, our country has taken a turn for the worse. The government has since expressed disappointment with and condemned in the strongest possible terms what they regard as irresponsible, hateful race baiting, malicious fabrications and falsehood utterances by opposition leader Mr. Barrett Jagdeo. The government says that it is reprehensible that the opposition leader chooses to sow seeds of division, discord, and race hate at a time when the people of Guyana are focused on the efforts to foster closer relations and a greater level of social cohesion. Jagdeo has since fired back at these statements, saying that while the coalition's policies are geared to deliver the good life to all Guyanese and tout social cohesion, they ignore the reality of many Guyanese people. This is not the first time that Jack Dio has been accused of race baiting. Just over a year ago, he was taken to court by prominent attorney Christopher Ram, who filed a criminal writ at the Wim Magistrate Court against the former president. Jack Dio was accused of making racially divisive statements at Babu John during a Chetty Jagan memorial ceremony. Will the David Granger administration file similar charges? We'll just have to wait and see. Rihanna? Thanks, Lisa. Meanwhile, at its weekly press conference held earlier today, the General Secretary of the People's Progressive Party, Civic, went on to somewhat defend Jagdeo by saying that he was a decent man. So, if he's not an indecent person, obviously his statement has to have some a high degree of decency. And decency has a strong connection with honesty and the truth. Clement Rohi, addressing a room of media operatives, maintains that Mr. Jagdeo's statement about Indian Guyanese being targeted is a fact. So all that Mr. Jagdeo has done was to externalize what is happening at the local level. So don't put this headline where he goes to the defense of Jagdeo, because I know how we all say. <laughs> the BB continues to accuse the government of witch hunting. After being continuously pressed for evidence, Rohi finally said that a list was being compiled to show that people of Indian ancestry, particularly those who favor the PPP, were targeted. Approximately one year later, such a list has never been seen. I'm not under any pressure to provide any names. The PPP never comes under pressure to provide anything. We provide it when we are ready to do so, because this is a responsible party. Tensions between the Tutsis and the Hutus peoples in the African country of Rwanda led to a massive genocide in 1994, which is basically the killing of a large group of persons belonging to one ethnic group. Close to 100,000 Tutsi persons were slaughtered in the travesty. Politics was seen as the reason. Are you promoting a situation that we could have a Rwanda? The media has a responsibility in that respect. Coming up on Headline News after the break, President Granger advocates a change in dress code at public corporations and unidentified body found in trench at Paradise on the east coast of Demerara. 
Everybody knows John Lewis Styles as the Levi's and Dockers store. But did you know we're also an authorized dealer for Nautica? Perry Ellis, U.S. Polo, Natural Issue, Joffrey Bean, and many others. We also carry the Bruno and Drill brands, who are actually the makers of Express shirts, at half the price of Express. So the next time you think of men's clothing, shoes, and accessories, there's only one choice. John Lewis Styles, simply different. With a distinctive flavor, Umda Palkigi is made from 100% pure vegetable oil. This Palkigi is a delight when preparing sweet meats and all the dishes for healthy cooking with a rich buttery taste and aroma. It is used for religious purposes and is a principal fuel for burning. Umda Palkigi is light, pure, with a real ghee texture. Messenger inviting one and all to the Golden Jubilee Emancipation Festival to be held on the 1st of August 2016 at the National Park in Georgetown. Come and see the Messenger live and kicking. God's willing, see you there. Short time, 6 p.m. Tickets $1,000. VIP $4,000. Tickets available at Nigel Supermarket and Makeda on Albert Street. Compliments of actor and Banks Beer. Have fun in Banks Country. It's a sizzling summer sale going down on the 29th of July at Clearance where prices are hot, hot, hot. Get up to 50% off items store-wide. I'm talking gents, sneakers, jeans, shirts, jerseys, caps, and everything you need for that sizzling summer look. And for the ladies, we have tops, jeans, short pants, flip-flops, dresses, sunshades, and everything that you ladies will need to give you that sexy summer look. Remember, the sizzling summer sale goes down for one day only on the 29th of July, right here at Clearance, always keeping you in style. Only at Kisoon's can you get the guaranteed offer of up to 50% discount on every item in their blowout factory surplus sale. 50% off for Guyana's 50th anniversary right through the year. Check it out at their spacious factory outlet at Reinfeldt Industrial Park where parking is no problem. They're in the mood to celebrate at Kisoon's. Once you want it, Kisoon's will make sure you don't leave without it. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, 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 please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you had a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867.
President Granger said the present dress code system was backward and needed to be relaxed. He said his first priority was serving the public's interest. And if the current dress code offends the public, then there must be a review. Kingsley Bryan will tell you more in this report. In recent times, a debate ignited over the dress codes instituted at government and public buildings. There are those who are of the opinion that the present dress code system needed review, given the many limitations to wearing comfortable clothing. This came shortly after the Guyana Revenue Authority relaxed their dress code. President Granger added voice to the debate and also expressed that the dress code is outdated. It seems to be quite archaic. Um, in some respects. Um, in the 1970s, we started moving towards comfort and towards uh, particularly allowing females to dress comfortably um, in accordance with the weather and of course what they could afford, bearing in mind the needs for decency. And it is my view that some of the, uh, the requirements in the so-called code, uh, they're certainly not law, um, they seem to be a bit um, backward. The head of state stated that the present dress code was an unnecessary imposition and noted he did not see the need for it in 2016. He said the dress code has been taken to ridiculous extremes and gave an example. I'm aware I got complaints from parents in a certain part of the hinterland where the children were being told to wear white socks and black, black shoes. I have been to schools in which an entire class was barefooted, had no shoes at all. <laughs> you mean that because of the dress code, those children will be deprived of an education? They can't afford shoes. President Granger highlighted that it wasn't an area that engaged the government at a legislative level. He said this was a minor bureaucrat that promulgated rules that were prejudicial. The president insisted that there was a need to be more liberal, and he was interested in serving the people's interests first. If the person is clean and decently clad and doesn't offend public mor morality, I think um, the public services should be extended to those persons. I mean, it's not something you know that they think about when they wake up in the morning, but if it's a public nuisance, I think we should, we should have a review of it. Many persons have bitterly complained of not gaining access to public buildings because of the dress code required. This is found to be entirely bothersome to most people because of the time consumed in lengthy travels to these offices and the economic losses which are incurred. Rihanna, back to you. Thanks, Kingsley. The police are investigating the discovery of yet another body, this time in a trench at Paradise on the east coast of Demerara. The body of a so far unidentified male was fished out of a trench after residents made the discovery. It was reported that the man is of Indian descent and was, dis and was discovered with a bottle in his crotch. He also had no shoes on his feet at the time he was removed from the trench. Residents were unable to identify the corpse, but one man stated that he was a habitual drinker. The body was also said to bear no wounds, which seemed to indicate there was no foul play. However, the police are continuing their investigation. Consultations on the country's inactive copyright legis legislation have started, but it would appear as though some members of the creative industry are not taking full advantage of the opportunities to engage authorities concerning the difficulties they face. During an interview last Friday, popular comedian and actor Lyndon Jumby Jones stressed that better coordination needs to come with, from those within the industry. The general public has um, designated us mm -hmm. unofficially. They, they've put us in charge. They look forward to us to see certain things done. The Nothing to Laugh About actor is asking that local actors, singers, producers and writers not give up in their fight to stop plagiarism and actually receive due credit for their work. I think we've got to come together as a unit mm -hmm. to, to, to make things happen. But... Um, most of us, we were caught up in the too much talk and nothing happening and we, we got beaten down into retiring, we've given up and hung up tools and so on. I hope with, um, uh, that with renewed effort we can, we can get somewhere. 
Jones used the opportunity to once again highlight the plight of his colleagues in the creative arts industry. Three guys out there, the bootleggers and the uh, pirate people who pirate, they will, they, they're in your face first of all. So you don't have to go to a store, you don't have to leave to go anywhere. They're right there on the streets. They're, you know, ready to sell and they will sell it for $200. So compare you getting the same thing, maybe of a less quality, $200, right in your face, you don't have to go to a particular place for it, to buying one for $1,000. The actor stressed the importance of the public's assistance to not only resist purchasing pirate DVDs and CDs, but to support local concerts and theater productions. We are literally suffering, right? But some people would want to say, then why do you continue doing it? We, you know, there's something, you just enjoy what you do and what you're best at, and you're in it for the love of it. A subsequent newscast will detail the status of the copyright consultations that are ongoing. Still ahead, our regional and international news. Women's fashion trends change every day. That's why John Lewis Styles makes it their duty to source items directly from the manufacturing brand, offering you more choices and better prices. Women love to look great, whether it's to work or play, from clothing, shoes, accessories, to handbags, watches, fragrances. Let's make you feel like the only girl in the world. John Lewis Styles, simply different. With a distinctive flavor, Umda Palkigi is made from 100% pure vegetable oil. This Palkigi is a delight when preparing sweet meats and other dishes for healthy cooking with a rich buttery taste and aroma. It is used for religious purposes and is a principal fuel for burning. Umda Palkigi is light, pure, with a real ghee texture. Don't let this moment in history pass you by. Kisoons want every Guyanese home to showcase a new piece of furniture to remember this glorious event of our Jubilee celebration. Kisoons have gone crazy. Every item is on sale right through this year in the Big Broad Factory Surplus Sale. Up to 50% off for the 50th birthday at Kisoons. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, wait, wait. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. In news from the region now, the average Venezuelan now spends eight hours a week in epic lines that are becoming longer and more violent as Venezuela falls deeper into an economic crisis. The Associated Press has our story. It's become a daily sight in Caracas. Long lines of people snaking throughout the city as they wait hours for food. Some with nothing to show for it. From 4 o'clock in the morning, I've been standing here in line. I have the number 900. 900. This is my ID card. I'm Venezuelan. There is no food. There is nothing. 
Every Venezuelan is assigned two shopping days a week based on their state ID number. But that's no guarantee. Inside this bakery, a sign telling patrons only one bread per person. Do not insist. Hunger has dramatically shifted the way of life here. In a country with one of the highest murder rates in the world, food and other shortages now top the list of voters' concerns. The food lines themselves have become dangerous. More than two dozen have been killed in line in the past year. Back in April, a brawl broke out as residents in the city of Maracaibo fought for bags of flour. Others looted a truck carrying beer. Venezuela once thrived off of its oil wealth, but years of mismanagement under a socialist government brought much of the nation's production to a halt. The country grew dependent on imports, and the steep drop in oil prices left it unable to pay for even some of the most basic necessities. If there aren't enough products, obviously, people compete to get the few products out there in the places where they appear, and that translates into long lines. After waiting for hours, Serena Vasquez decided to give up, returning home to empty shelves. She says she has no milk for the baby, nothing. Some Venezuelans have even stormed the closed border with Colombia in their desperate search for food. Last week, hundreds of women pushed through border security to purchase items to feed their families. For those unable to travel or buy on the black market, they have no choice but to wait in lines. A new reality with no immediate end in sight. Noreen Nasser, Associated Press. And internationally, the First Lady gave a full endorsement of Hillary Clinton at the end of a divided opening DNC day between Clinton and Bernie Sanders supporters. Here's more in this Good Morning America report. Last night's drama here at the Democratic Convention. First Lady Michelle Obama, as we said, wowed the crowd with her takedown of Donald Trump. Then it was Bernie Sanders' turn to try and rally his still angry supporters behind Hillary Clinton. Cecilia Vega was on the floor for all of it. She joins us now. Good morning, Cecilia. George, you know it. What a scene it was in here. Bernie Sanders tried to pass the baton to Hillary Clinton, vowing to do whatever it takes to help her win. But from many of his supporters, he faced open rebellion. The man at the center of a political revolution got a three-minute standing ovation. Thank you. But overnight, Bernie Sanders' battle cry for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton must become the next president of the United States. Met with defiance, supporters in tears, the California Ooh. delegation openly booing. On stage, Sanders trying to play mediator. It is no secret that Hillary Clinton and I disagree on a number of issues. That is what this campaign has been about. That is what democracy is about. While off stage, he pleaded for calm after scenes like this. Bernie, Bernie. Delegates shouting at each other just minutes after the gavel kicked off the convention. Even comedian Sarah Silverman lashing out. To the Bernie or bust people, you're being ridiculous. But it was Michelle Obama who stole the show. Our motto is, when they go low, we go high. Taking on Trump. Don't let anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great. That somehow we need to make it great again. Because this right now is the greatest country on earth. And bringing former President Bill Clinton to his feet with her endorsement of a previous first lady. And when I think about the kind of president that I want for my girls and all our children, that's what I want. Someone who understands that the issues a president faces are not black and white and cannot be boiled down to 140 characters. When you have the nuclear codes at your fingertips and the military in your command, you can't make snap decisions. An emotional Mrs. Obama even choking back tears. I wake up every morning in a house that was built by slaves. And, and, and I watch my daughters, two beautiful, intelligent black young women, playing with their dogs on the White House lawn.
And because of Hillary Clinton, my daughters and all our sons and daughters now take for granted that a woman can be president of the United States. You can hear it there. Those cheers were just deafening. Now, we're told that Michelle Obama was heavily involved in writing and editing that speech, but we also know that the speechwriter behind those words is the same person who wrote that speech that was borrowed by Melania Trump during last week's Republican convention. Robin, I can tell you in here that moment when Michelle Obama was on that stage was that one moment that had prolonged, sustained unity in this convention mm -hmm. hall last night. It was really amazing to you be in here for that. that. That's right, Cecilia. Thank you. And that's Safe TV2 Headline News for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Safe TV2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and SafeTVGhana.com. You can also tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast, and Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock for more news. For now, I'm Rihanna Ahmad, signing out from this newscast. You have a blessed evening.